Welcome. Thank you for joining us for this online experience. Uh, in just a moment, we'll be engaging in a time of worship, and then we'll look at the scripture and how it applies to our lives. If you haven't had a chance yet, we encourage you to join us and uh, check us out online at wearegrace.city. In the meantime, grab a cup of coffee, get comfortable, and let's worship our King together.
Well, New Year's Day is here. Congratulations, you made it to 2023, and it is worth celebrating. If you haven't heard this question already, you will likely hear it at some point this week, and that is, what is your New Year's resolution? And I love this quote by Vern McClellan, and it says this, what the New Year brings to you depends on what you bring to the New Year. According to a 2021 research study, they found that 41% of Americans, 41% endeavored on a New Year's resolution in that year. And so they attempted to accomplish some things that we've probably tried to do before, exercising more, eating healthy, losing weight, uh, trying to get their finances in order. Some stopped smoking or attempted to stop smoking or reduce the amount of drinking that they did and even try to manage their stress. And so each of these people got up and they tried to establish some goals that they wanted to accomplish. And what research also found was that 9% of them, only 9% actually achieved those goals. And so I believe that we often attempt at trying to self-improve and and beat ourselves up in such a way, trying to fix ourselves, that we, we become gluttons to that type of methodology. And it is hard to break that we we try to do these things and try to fix ourselves with good intentions, right? None of us wake up saying we have this goal that we want to break. We want to try to achieve it. And and so we set out on these resolutions. and, And for those that actually do achieve these resolutions, they have to try to reinvent themselves every single year with something new. And if we don't accomplish those things, we often walk away feeling guilty and unforgiving of ourselves. So what if instead of aiming for a new year, new you kind of resolution this year, we decided that at any moment it could be a do-over? 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. So instead of trying to chase some resolution, we can actually experience redemption and restoration. Matter of fact, God is the originator of the do-over. We see this from Genesis to Revelation. We, We see an overarching theme and story of four movements, creation, the fall, redemption, and restoration that all point to this God who gives do-overs. There are all kinds of stories in the Bible that point to this God of do-overs, the the God that gave a do-over to a shady tax collector who eventually became a friend and sat at his table. He gave a do-over to a murderer and an adulterer who became known as a man after God's own heart. An anxious outcast who led millions of people out of slavery, and he gave a do-over to a promiscuous woman who received forgiveness instead of being stoned to death. Every one of these do-overs began with a forgiving God who reconciled imperfect people as they were and not as they should be. They each needed a God that could enable them to live a life worthy of their calling, a God that would make that possible through second chances and do-overs. And this life couldn't be found in behavior modification or a yearly resolution plan. It could only be found in the reworking of the heart that only Jesus could do in us. So let me ask you this. What have you been focusing on in trying to modify instead of receiving God's mercy. Lamentations 3, 22 through 23 says, The Lord's loving kindnesses indeed never cease, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. God is faithful when we are unfaithful. When we fumble, he is faithful. This is the God of do-overs. So this new year doesn't have to be one filled with pressures to perform or perfect a new you. Your house may still be disorganized, but God loves a mess. You may not have six-pack abs by Easter, but God loves every shape and size. You may not have extra zeros at the end of your bank account, but God loves us who depend on him. And this new year can be a year of do-overs filled with fresh starts and clean slates, not every year, but every day and every second because of the God who loves you for who you are.
And if you're looking for a tribe that you can do that with, welcome home. This is the place for you. We want to be able to help you find a group that you can connect with or, or be part of a team in, that you can do life with so that you're not doing this alone, that you can be alongside folks that are trying to strive to live like Jesus every day. And so we have these places for you. We want to cheerlead you on and pray alongside you because God's grace offers every single one of us a do-over every second that we receive it. Let me leave you with this from Paul in 2 Thessalonians 1, 11 through 12. It says, So we keep on praying for you, asking our God to enable you to live a life worthy of his call. May he give you the power to accomplish all good things your faith prompts you to do. Then the name of our Lord Jesus will be honored because of the way you live, and you will be honored along with God. This is all made possible because of the grace of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for being a God that has not only rescued us and redeemed us, but that you are the one restoring us, that we don't have to embark in new resolutions every year, that in our mistakes and our miscomings and all of those times that we, we fumble, that you are faithful and forgiving, that we have do-overs every single moment that we allow ourselves to receive it. So we want to jump into that this year as we learn what it looks like to live and love like you in 2023. God, would you help us lean into these truths and be praying that your mercies are new every single day, that you are a God that is so authentic and so real and so relational that you're so close to us that you desire to come alive in us in that way every day. So we pray for that for our church. We pray for that for our families, our workplace, our neighborhoods. God, that your kingdom would come and your will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that we would seek first the kingdom in all things that we do because you are a God of do-over. We love you. We love each other. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to thank you again for joining us for this online experience. We hope you are encouraged and blessed and challenged by our time together. Now let's go live this out. If you haven't had the opportunity yet, join us in person each and every Sunday at 9.30 or 11 a.m. Love you, friends. Go in peace.